Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Messiah in the Old Testament, part two and a half. And because I didn't complete part two, I had to make a second part. And it's very important that we go over as much evidence as we can together and read it and get understanding and add to our knowledge base and add to our notes and add to our swordsmanship in the fight for salvation, in the fight for the Most Highest Kingdom, brothers and sisters. So, thank y'all for tuning in again and joining me here. As always, all praises and great glory goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. And for those that believe this, hallelujah. Hold on to what you got. Hold fast to what you got. And believe not every spirit that come along with every wind of doctrine. And for those who are confused, get an understanding. Reach out to the Most High and He will show you what this means. He will show you what He has given to the house of David. He has given a kingdom to the David and his sons forever. And there was one prophesied to come out of the loins of King David. As it says here, I will raise up unto David a righteous branch. That means it's coming out of the house of David, the sons of David, who was given the promise of being the kings of Yasharal. And this king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice in the earth. Not just in our land, but in the earth. So y'all know this is a future an event, future event. And his name will be called Yahweh, our righteousness. He will bear the name of the Most High and have the words put in his mouth from the Most High. As the Most High told Moses. A prophet will be raised up in the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, like unto Moses. Him you shall listen to, brothers and sisters. And many are rebelling against this right now. They think it's the heathens who made up this narrative. They think it's the Gentiles, the Romans who created the New Testament. They don't have that type of skill or knowledge to do such a thing. Brothers and sisters. So. In this. Small recap. I want y'all to read this. And press pause where you need to. And now I want to go to um let's see where am I going? No, not there. Here. Just to recap on understanding everywhere where it says David my servant shall be king over them, you have to remember line upon line, priest upon priest, up here a little there little. To get an understanding, what does this mean? Does it contradict the other scriptures? Right here it says, My servant David shall be their prince forever. Knowing that the Most High said from his mouth, he said that David and his sons would be the kings over there. So it would start with David and would go through David and his sons, through his sons, the kingship. So is it leaving out the sons because it says my servant David? No, it's the same as it says right here. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. It's the same understanding that when you see Jacob, my servant, it's talking about all of Jacob's children, the 12 tribes from Abraham and Isaac down to Jacob and his sons. The promises were given. And this special promise given to King David.
passes down to his sons and to his household the kingship. And that's why you see these prophecies written about someone coming of the loins of King David, whom King David called his master. That was before him, but yet after him, right? And we have read in the book of Enoch in part two that the Most High prepared this chosen one before he created the heavens, before he created the earth, before he created the sun and the moon, before he created Adam. This one was chosen and prepared. And he was with the Most High. He was the word of Most High, spoken word of the Most High. And that's the understanding that's missing. That could fill in the gap. What is the spoken word of the Most High? It is a part of the Most High, yet it is the Most High. And I'm not talking about no trinity, brothers and sisters. Lead that with Catholicism. Because what we was given was way before they called it a trinity or whatever they want to call it. The Most High always had His Holy Spirit, which is His essence, His power, His knowledge, His wisdom, His, his understanding, everything. And His spoken word, His mouth, His breath. The spoken word was always a piece of Him. It was Him. This is the tripping that's going on right here. You got to throw out what you learned from Catholicism, from Christianity and the Protestant churches. You got to throw out what you learned from Islam, Judaism, and all their pastors and preachers that came before. You got to throw all that out and get a new understanding of these of the word fresh from the most high lips, brothers and sisters. And though he spoke through his prophets, though he spoke through his angels, it's still him. So this is the missing link and the missing, under, the missing understanding that's going on in Zion. And how many are slipping and falling. And then you got the narrative, oh, there's no one besides the Most High. And that is true. But they're taking it out of context. They're, they're trying to say that because the Messiah is sitting on the right hand side, that equates to him being equal with the Most High. That equates to him being another separate ent entity with the same status and power of the Most High. Like, like he can just go off and go create his own uh, um, heaven and earth somewhere else, separate from the Most High. That's not what that is saying when he says no one is beside the Most High. There's only the Most High. The Most High is our Savior. He is all of the things. He's our great King. He's our Savior. He's all of these things. But he can appoint kings. He can appoint high priests. He can make his word flesh. People not believing in the power of the Most High to do these things. But they can believe Adam was created of dirt. They can believe that the holy angels was created perfect right from the start. They can believe all these things. But the son of man, the son of the most high, the chosen one hidden from the beginning of time, they cannot grasp. And if they did have the understanding, they are allowing other people to come in with Torah doctrine to take their crowns from them and Put them in a lake of fire with them. You can't just one line things brothers and sisters. You can't just take this and say okay David is supposed to be the king forever. No there's other scriptures written about King David and his sons. And there are prophecies concerning King David and the house of, and the sons of David. That you have to encompass into 
this one saying here. So let's go back to the book of Enoch and let's continue on reading from book of Enoch 48 and 7. And let's continue to get this understanding, brothers and sisters. But the wisdom of Yahweh's spirits has revealed him to the holy and the righteous. Who? Let's go right back up here. And because of this, he was chosen and hidden in front of him before the world was created and forever. Who was this person chosen? Who was this one? Who is this son of man? Who was named in the presence of Yahweh's spirits? And who was brought to the head of days? And his name was brought to the head of days. Who was this one, brothers and sisters? Was it King David? No, it was not. But the wisdom of Yahweh's spirits has revealed him to the holy and righteous, for he has kept safe the lot of the righteous, for they have hated and rejected this world of inequity. And we have. And all its works and its ways they have hated in the name of Yahweh's spirits, for in his name they are saved, and his and he is the one who will require their lives. And in those days, the kings of the earth and the strong who possess the dry ground will have downcast faces because of the works of their hands. And these same ones that are feeding our brothers and sisters false doctrine is going to have downcast faces. And the ones that were with them going to have downcast faces. What can they say? Can they point over there to the person that they listen to and say it's their fault? No, you got to bear your own unbelief and your own unrighteousness before the Most High. These people on here cannot save you. All we can do is help For on the day of their distress and trouble, they will not save themselves. And I will give them into the hands of my chosen ones, like straw in the fire and like lead in water. So they will burn in front of the righteous and sink in front of the holy and no trace will be found of them. And on the day of their trouble, there will be rest on the earth and they will fall down in front of him and will not rise. So just as the scriptures say that the kingdoms will be given, will be given to Yahusha, it also say the kingdom will be given to the saints because we will be with him and be as him as well. And together we will reign and rule on the earth brothers and sisters and there will be no one who will take them with his hands and raise them from they for they denied Yahweh's spirits and his Messiah may the name of Yahweh's spirits be blessed for wisdom has been poured out like water and glory will not fail in front of him forever and ever for he is powerful in all the secrets of the righteous of righteousness and inequity will pass away like a shadow and will have no existence for the chosen one stands in front of Yahweh's spirits and his glory is forever and ever and his power for all generations and in him dwell the spirit of wisdom and the spirit that gives understanding and the spirit of knowledge and of power and the spirit of those who sleep in righteousness. Hallelujah. And he will judge the things that are secret. And no one will be able to say an idle word in front of him. For he has been chosen in front of Yahweh's spirits in accordance with his wish. Or his will. I don't like that word wish. But his will. 
And in those days, a change will occur for the holy and the chosen. The lighter days will rest upon them and glory and honor will return to the holy. So you cannot go before the Most High without the Son, who, without the chosen one, without the elect one, the one the Most High sent on his behalf to do what he was supposed to do. You cannot see him enter into the kingdom or go before him and live in his presence without this one, this holy one. And on the day of trouble, calamity will be heaped up over the sinners, but the righteous will conquer in the name of Yahweh's spirits. And he will show this to others so that they might repent and abandon the works of their hands. So sinners like myself has been shown the ways of righteousness, shown how to repent and abandon the evil works of my hands that I used to do. A sinner abandoning all the evil I've done. And this is what you supposed to be purging out, purging out the leaven, the works of unrighteousness, brothers and sisters. Focus on you. Look at yourself. Look at the person in a mirror. And confess all your butt naked sins before the throne room of the Father. Expose yourself. Stop trying to cover up and hide. Hide all your inequity and your sins. Stop scurrying for darkness when the light hits you. Let it hit you. Let it expose so you can come before him trembling and shivering and crying and and praying for mercy through confession and the faith and belief and will that repentance can and will work in you, brothers and sisters. And they will have no honor in front of Yahweh's spirits, but in his name they will be saved, and Yahweh's spirits will have mercy on them, for his mercy is great. And he is righteous in his judgment in front of his glory. Inequity will not be able to stand against his judgment. He who does not repent will be destroyed. So without you you need Hamashiach when you go before him this the only way you will get the honor and glory when you stand before him is when his mercy shine upon you and wash away all your sins and then when you are clean when his mercy has fell upon you you will be saved then comes the glory and the honor and everything promised after such time, brothers and sisters. And he is righteous in his judgment in front of his glory. And equity will not be able to stand against his judgment. He who does not repent will be destroyed. And from then on, I will not have mercy on them, says Yahweh's spirits. And in those days, the earth will return that which was entrusted to it. And Shuo will return that which was which has been entrusted to it and that which has received it has received and destruction will return what it owes and he will choose the righteous and the holy from among them for the day has come near when they must be saved and in those days the chosen one will sit on his throne and all the secrets of wisdom will flow out from the counsel of his mouth. For Yahweh's spirit has appointed him and glorified him. There's Daniel 7, 13 and 14 again. And in those days the mountains will leap like rams. And the hills will skip like lambs, satisfied with milk. And all will become angels in heaven. Their faces will shine with joy. For in those days the chosen one will have risen and the earth will rejoice. 
and the righteous will dwell upon it, and the chosen will walk upon it. And after those days, in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is secret, for I had been carried off by a whirlwind, and they had brought me to the west, there my eyes saw the secrets of heaven, everything that will occur on earth, a mountain of iron, a mountain of copper, mountain of silver, a mountain of gold, a mountain of soft metal, and mountain of, of lead. And I asked the angel who went with, with me, saying, What are these things which I have seen in secret? And he said to me, All these things which you have seen serve the authority of his Messiah, so that he may be strong and powerful on the earth. And that angel of peace answered me, saying, Wait a little, and you will see, and everything which is secret, which Yahweh's Spirit has established, will be revealed to you. And these mountains that you have seen, the mountain of iron and copper, silver, gold, soft metal, lead, all these in front of the chosen one will be like wax before fire. And like the water that comes down from above unto, those, unto these mountains, they will be weak under his feet. And it will come to pass in those days that neither by gold nor by silver will men save themselves. They will be unable to save themselves or to flee. So as y'all reading this, y'all are seeing other scriptures from the King, King James Version in the book of Enoch. You are seeing witnesses and to that which was written in the King James Version all up in here. Especially right here. And many other uh, um, chapters before chapter 45 where I started in part 2 in the book of Enoch. Verse 8, 52 and 8. And there will be neither iron for war nor material for a breastplate. Bronze will be no use and tin will be of no use and will count for nothing and lead will not be wanted. So all those things that you treasure so much, cell phones, computer screens, automobiles, flying airplanes and boats and big ships made of lead and metal and not all that's going to be gone all these will be wiped out and destroyed from the face of the earth when the chosen one appears in front of Yahweh's spirits and when the earth is shaken violently as the scriptures say all the buildings will fall all their creations will be broken apart. Everything that we put our trust in today as an established society will be ripped up, ripped to shreds and burned. Brothers and sisters, and this world will not exist as you know it today. You will not have cell phones, computers, internet, TVs. You will not have your appliances and all these other things. Everything will be made differently. It's not going to be as uh, you know it today. Like everything made and uses electricity and oil. Things made of oil. You're not going to have power lines all over the place and and special other uh, power devices and stuff like that. That's in this world which will be destroyed. We will see what will come in the world of the Most High. Brothers and sisters, uh, and during the kingdom of His Chosen One as well, we'll see what the Most High will allow in that world when it gets here 
53 and 1. And there my eyes saw a deep valley, and its mouth was open, and all those who dwell upon dry ground and the sea and the islands will bring gifts and presents and offerings to him. But that deep valley will not become full. And their hands commit evil, and everything at which the righteous toil, the sinners evilly devour. And so the sinners will be destroyed from the in front of Yahweh's spirits and will be banished from the face of his earth unceasingly forever and ever. This is the most high as earth he created. He appoints who is going to run it on his behalf or uh, actually he has never stopped reigning and ruling over the whole earth brothers and sisters. But he turned the Gentiles over to what they wanted and gave them kings that they wanted in their hearts. And he did allow that. But these kings and evil spirits and stuff like that still had to obey his will when he commands them. For I saw the angels of punishment going and preparing all the instruments of Hashatan. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, and I said to him, These instruments, for whom are they preparing them? And he said to me, They are preparing these for the kings and the powerful of the earth, so that by means of them they may be destroyed. And after this the righteous and chosen one will cause the house of his congregation to appear. From then on, in the name of Yahweh's spirits, they will not be hindered. So again, you see, the righteous, which is uh, all the holy ones, and his chosen one, Hamashiach. And this matches scripture, brothers and sisters. And in front of him, these mountains will not be firm like the earth, and the hills will be like a spring of water, and the righteous will have rest from the ill treatment of the sinners. And I looked and turned to another part of the earth, and I saw there a deep valley with burning fire. And they brought the kings and powerful and threw them into that valley. And there my eyes saw how they made instruments for them, iron chains of immeasurable weight. And I asked the angel of peace, who went with me, saying, These chains... For whom are they being prepared? And he said to me, These are being prepared for the host of Azazel, so that they may take them and throw them into the lowest part of hell. And they will cover their jaws with rough stones as Yahweh's spirits commanded. And Michael and Gabriel, Raphael and Feniel, these will take hold of them on that great day and throw them on that day into the furnace of burning fire, so that Yahweh's spirits may take vengeance on them for their inequity, and that they became servants of Hashatan, and led astray those who dwell upon the dry ground. And in those days the punishment of Yahweh's spirits will go out, and all the storehouses of waters which are above the sky and under the earth will be open, and all the waters will be joined with the waters that are above the sky. The water that is above the sky is male, and the water that is under the earth is female. Okay, I had to stop right there, brothers and sisters, because in some cases you do have to watch with some of these translations. I have a book of Enoch in front of me right now. I'm going to read from it what it says in this book. And they, and Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phineel shall take hold of them on that great day. And they shall cast them into the burning furnace that Yahweh's spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness. And in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. And in those days shall punishment come from Yahweh's spirits. 
and he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens and he will open the chambers of the fountains which are in the earth beneath and all the waters shall be joined with waters which are above the heavens and they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth and those who dwell under the ends of the heaven and when they have recognized their unrighteousness which they have wrought on the earth then by these shall they perish so where did this part come from the water that is above is the sky is male and the water that is under the earth is female this is where we do have to have the sermon from the spirit on most high things that are added and snuck in brothers and sisters not that this the rest of this isn't right there are things that are snuck in like this and immediately this rung out to me and I could see something at work within one of his translators we got to be very diligent and careful brothers and sisters so let's go ahead and read on and all those who dwell upon the dry ground and those who dwell upon I mean under the ends of heaven will be wiped out so what I just read in this other book matches up except for this part here and we know that when the Most High opened up the waters to destroy the earth with Noah when he saved Noah he opened the fountains of waters from above and opened up the fountains of water from below that they may flood the earth together and we know that he never mentioned anything like this the waters above is male and the waters underneath the earth is female. This was added. And I'm glad I got these two different versions. But the spirit of discernment would have told me that this was added. Brothers and sisters. But don't let that thwart you. Just be careful on what version of the book of Enoch you you um pick up and read it thoroughly and let the spirit of truth lead and guide you into any uh, of these added things and just as we had some added things in the King James Version uh, the spirit of truth has revealed those things to us but we don't trash the whole book because of it and some would make the case to trash the whole book and trash the book of Enoch just because of this. Nah, nah, brothers and sisters. Let's read on. And because of this, they will acknowledge their iniquity which they have committed on earth. And through this, they will be destroyed. And after this, the head of days repented and said, I have destroyed to no purpose all those who dwell upon the dry ground. And he swore by his great name, from now on I will not act like this toward all those who dwell upon the dry ground. And I'll put a sign in heaven, and it will be a pledge of faith between me and them forever, so long as heaven is above the earth. And this will be in accordance with my commandment, when I want to take hold of them with the hands of the, of the angels on the day of distress and pain, and in the face of my anger and my wrath. My wrath and anger will remain upon them, says Yahweh, Yahweh of spirits. So he will no longer destroy the earth as promised. He put a rainbow in the heavens or in the sky as a, a, a sign of his covenant with, with uh, us and the earth to never destroy it by floods of water. But he will use his angels, as he says here. And we bear witness to that throughout the regular scriptures, right? Verse 4. 
You powerful kings who dwell upon the dry ground will be obliged to watch my chosen one sit down on the throne of my glory and judge in the name of Yahweh's spirits, Azazel, and all his associates and all his hosts. So we're going to be right there with Hamashiach judging the angels and judging all of their hosts and associates, including the ones who join themselves to them of the flesh. This is the honor the Most High has given us. It's still the Most High judging. It's still Him. 56 and 1. And I saw there the host of the angels of punishment as they went and they were holding chains of iron and bronze and I asked the angels of peace who went with me saying to whom are those who are holding the chains going and he said to me each to his own chosen ones and to their beloved ones so that they may be thrown into the chasm in the depths of the valley and then the that valley will be filled with their chosen and beloved ones and the days of their life will be at an end and the days of their leading astray will no longer be counted and in those days the angels will gather together and will throw themselves towards the east upon the Parthians and Medes they will stir up the king so that a disturbing spirit will come upon them and they will drive them from their thrones and they will come out like lions from their lot from their lairs and like hungry wolves in the middle of their flocks and they will go up and trample on the land of my chosen ones and we saw this happen this is all prophecy we see fulfilled when the uh, the Babylonians came, the Medes and the Persians came, then the Greeks, then the Romans, the trample upon the chosen ones, and the land of my chosen ones will become before them a trampling ground and a beaten track. But the city of my righteous ones will be a hindrance to their horses, and they will stir up slaughter amongst themselves, and their own right hand will be strong against them. And a man will not admit to knowing his neighbor or his brother, nor his son, his father. This, this is the battle of Armageddon. Or his mother, until through their death, there are corpses enough and their punishment. It will not be in vain. And in those days, Shaul will open his mouth and they will sink into it and their destruction. Shaul will swallow up the sinners in front of the faces of the chosen. And it came to pass after this that I saw another host of chariots with men riding on them. And they came upon the wind from the east and from the west to the south. And the sound of the noise of their chariots was heard. And when this occurred, the holy ones observed it from heaven and the pillars of the earth were shaken from their foundations and the sound was heard from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven throughout one day and all will fall down and worship Yahweh's spirits and this is the end of the second parable let's go on to the third parable and I began to speak the third parable about the righteous and the chosen blessed are you the righteous and the chosen for your lot will be glorious and the righteous will be in the light of the sun and the chosen in the light of the eternal life and there will be no end to the days of their life and the days of the holy will be without number and they will seek the light and will find righteousness with Yahweh of spirits peace be to the righteous with Yahweh of the world and after this it will be said to the holy that they should seek in heaven the secrets of righteousness the light of faith for it has become bright as the sun upon the dry ground and darkness has passed away and there will be ceaseless light 
and to a limit of, and to a limit of days. They will not come. There will be no limit of days. For darkness will have been destroyed previously, and the light will endure in front of Yahweh's spirits, and the light of uprightness will endure in front of Yahweh's spirits forever. All right. Let me see here. Yeah, should I read this one as well? I think I wanted to skip down to here to 61. And in those days I saw long cords given to those angels, and they required wings for themselves and flew and went towards the north. And I asked the angel, saying, Why did these take the long cords and go? And he said to me, They went so that they may measure. And the angel who went with me said to me, These will bring the measurements of the righteous and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous, that they may rely on the name of Yahweh's spirits forever and ever. The chosen will begin to dwell with the chosen, and those measurements will be given to faith and will strengthen righteousness. So right now, brothers and sisters, we are building up our measure of faith and measure of righteousness that we may seek out those like us and measure them as well. That's the testing of the each other's spirit to see if we are of the most high of righteousness and truth and we are seeking each other out we're measuring with this measure stick some of us is just ain't got the measuring right yet but keep working on it you're going to understand how to measure people's true faith and righteousness whether you should dwell with them or not because this part will come true that we may strengthen one another and that's why a lot of y'all are here on this channel. Uh, to be strengthened from a brother, from your brother. And these measurements will reveal all the secrets of the debts of the earth and those who were destroyed by the desert and those who were devoured by the fish of the sea and by animals that they may return and rely on the day of the chosen one. For no one will be destroyed in front of Yahweh's spirits and no one can be destroyed and all those in the heavens above received the commandment and power and one voice and one light like fire was given to them so even now on earth as we are drawn together in righteousness and trying to find the righteous ones the wheat is separated from the tares but this coming at great and glorious day where we would dwell with nothing but righteous. We won't have no unholy ones around us. Not one unholy one will ever exist around us ever again. And I look forward to that day. Really do. And him before everything they blessed and exalted and praised in wisdom. Oh, did I skip this? And all those in the heavens above received the commandment and power oh i did read that and him before everything they blessed and exalted and praised in wisdom and they showed themselves wise in speech and in the spirit of life and yahweh's spirit set the chosen one on the throne of his glory and he would judge all the works of the holy ones in heaven above and in the balance he will weigh their deeds the Most High gave this chosen one this duty to do on his behalf. And when he lifts his face to judge their secret ways according to the world, according to the word of the name of Yahweh's spirits and their path according to the way of the righteous judgment of Yahweh Most High, they will all speak with one voice and bless and praise and exalt and glorify the name of Yahweh's spirits. Hallelujah. And he will call all the host of the heavens and all the holy ones above and the host of Yah, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the ophanim, and all the angels of power and all the angels of principalities and the chosen one and the other host that is upon the dry ground and over the water and on that day. And over the water on that day, and they will raise one voice and will bless and praise and glorify and exalt in the spirit of faith and in the spirit of wisdom and of patience and in the spirit of mercy and the spirit of justice and of peace 
and in the spirit of goodness, and they will all say with one voice, Blessed is he, and blessed be the name of Yahweh's spirits forever and ever. All those who do not sleep in heaven above will bless him. All his holy ones who are in heaven will bless him. And all the chosen ones who dwell, who dwell in the garden of life, in every spirit able to bless and praise and exalt and hallow your holy name, in all flesh which to the limit of its power will praise and bless your name forever and ever. For great is the mercy of Yahweh spirits, and he is long-suffering in all his works and all his forces. As many as he has made, he has revealed to the righteous and the chosen in the name of Yahweh spirits. And thus Yahweh commanded the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell upon the earth and said, Open your eyes and raise your horns if you are able to acknowledge the chosen one. And Yahweh's spirits, a spirit set on his throne of glory, and the spirit of righteousness was poured out on him, and the word of his mouth kills all the sinners and all the lawless, and they are destroyed in front of him. Now, above we read that no one could be destroyed, right? So you got to get an understanding of what that's saying. It's not contradicting. Now, they will be experiencing eternal death from the presence of the Most High, but their souls, which was created to be, they were created to be a living being. Adam was created to be a living being, and all his children after him. So, they will be destroyed forever in the lake of fire, continuously destroyed. But their spirits, they have eternal spirits, which cannot be destroyed. Because we all come from the Most High. We all come from Him. With the breath of life. And we all have His eternal spirit in us. That's why we will live forever. In one place or the other. In a place of life. In a, or in a place of eternal destruction. Where you eternally be destroyed over and over again. But your spirit will live on. And on that day, all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who possess the earth will stand up and they will see and recognize how he is, how he sits on the throne of his glory and all, and the righteous are judged in righteousness in front of him. And no idle word is spoken in front of him. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. Just got chapter 63 and that's it. And pain will come upon them as upon a woman in labor, for whom giving birth is difficult. When her child enters the mouth of the womb, and she has difficulty giving birth, and one half of them will look at the other, and they will be terrified, and will cast down their faces, and pain will take hold of them. When they see that son of a woman sitting on the throne of his glory, Uh huh. And the mighty kings and all those who possess the earth will praise and bless and exalt him who rules everything that is hidden. For from the beginning that son of man was hidden and the Most High kept him in the presence of his power and revealed him only to the chosen. And the chosen will be the only ones left to hold on to this son of man, to this Son of the Most High, to the Chosen One, to the Elect One, to the Most High's salvation, to His grace and His mercy. We will be the ones to hold on to that at the end of all things. Where well, everybody else is going to fall away from it. Choosing to believe false doctrines and false religions and everything but the truth. You know? And the community of the Holy and the Chosen will be sown, and all the chosen will stand before him on that day. And all the mighty kings and the exalted and those who rule the dry ground will fall down before him on their faces and worship, and they will set their hopes on that son of man, and will entreat him and will petition for mercy from him. Why? Because the Most High has given judgment into his hands to judge us. Why? 
and also gave him a kingdom that all should serve him. But Yahweh's spirits will then so press them that they will hasten to go out from before him and their faces will be filled with shame and the darkness will grow deeper on their faces and the angels of punishment will take them so that they may repay them for the wrong that they did to his children and to his chosen ones. And they will become a spectacle to the righteous and to his chosen ones. They will rejoice over them, for the anger of Yahweh's spirits will rest upon them, and the sword of Yahweh's spirits will be drunk with them. Remember it says, his sword will be drenched with blood from heaven. Hamashiach will be drenched, his, his vesture will be drenched in blood. So will ours. All those who rise up to take vengeance will be drenched in blood on that day when the vengeance of the Most High is enacted upon the sons of men, the unrighteous ones. And the blood will flow up to the horse's bridle. And the righteous and the chosen will be saved on that day, and they will never see the faces of the sinners and the lawless from then on. And Yahweh's spirits will remain over them, and with that Son of Man they will dwell and eat, and lie down and rise up forever and ever. And the righteous and chosen will have risen from the earth and will have ceased to cast down their faces and will have put on the garment of life. Those white robes, brothers and sisters. And this will be a garment of life from Yahweh's spirits and your garments will not wear out and your glory will not fail in front of Yahweh's spirits. In those days, the mighty kings who possess the dry ground will entreat Yahweh will entreat the angels of his punishment to whom they have been handed over so that they might give them a little respite and so that they might fall down and worship in front of Yahweh's spirits and confess their sins in front of him and they will bless and praise Yahweh's spirits and say blessed be Yahweh's spirits and the king and Yahweh of kings and Yahweh of, of the mighty and Yahweh of the rich and Yahweh of glory and Yahweh of wisdom and everything secret is clear in front of you and your power is for all generations and your glory is forever and ever deep and without number are all your secrets and your righteousness is beyond reckoning now we realize that we ought to praise and bless Yahweh of kings and the one who is king over all kings and they will say would that we might be given a respite so that we might praise and thank and bless him and make our confession in front of his glory and know and now we long for a respite but now but do not find it I think i'm being a little bit over dramatic <laughs> and now we long for a respite but do not find it we are driven off and do not obtain it like Esau, he sought for repentance and he couldn't find it. And the light has passed away from before us and darkness will be our dwelling forever and ever. See, mercy is over with for them. Though they're sitting there confessing and repenting, it's too late. It's too late for them. Mercy is far from them. For we have not made our confession before him, and we have not praised the name of Yahweh of kings, and we have not praised Yahweh for all his works, but our hopes had been on the scepter of our kingdom and of our glory. And on the day of our affliction and distress, he does not save us, and we find no respite to make our confession that our Yahweh is faithful in all his doings. And in all his judgments and his justice, and that his judgments show no respect of persons. And we pass away from in front of him because of all our works and all our sins have been counted exactly. Then they will say to them, our souls are set, 
are sated with possessions gained through inequity, but they do not prevent or going down into the flames of the torment of Sheol. And after this, their faces will be filled with darkness and shame in front of that son of man, and they will be driven away from him, and the sword will dwell among them in front of him. And thus says Yahweh's spirits, this is the law and the judgment for the mighty and the kings and the exalted and for those who possess the dry ground in front of Yahweh's spirits, brothers and sisters. And this is all that I shall read from the book of Enoch, which proves in conjunction with other scriptures written in the Old Testament of the King James Version that there was a Messiah one come from above the Son of Man Son of the Most High spoken of and it's up to you to believe by faith with that I'm going to say Shalom brothers and sisters <laughs>